the shot. <laughs> So the background's a little bit different because I'm currently in Spain with my family for two weeks. So hopefully the B-roll will be a little bit more interesting than just... So hopefully the B-roll will be a little bit more interesting than normal. And I really hope the quality is okay out here on the balcony. So I finished the combat codes. <laughs> some. I'd already read about half of it before I got here, so I just finished this. And a bit about the book, the combat codes is in a world where global conflicts are resolved by one-on-one -on -one sparring. So all the countries have their own elite warriors. They deal with the political issues that the world has. And in the combat codes, we follow Murray, who is an old retired griever, which is the name for this league of warriors that fight for the country. And at the start, we don't really know much about Murray and why he left the Griever Knights to become a scout. But now as a scout, he's looking for more fighters to train up to become these Griever Knights. And then in comes Point of View 2, who is Seago. And Seago is in this underground kind of slave ring, fighting for this kind of club owner. We do also get some flashback chapters for Seago of him on an island and training with a man called a Farmer. But we don't really know how Seago went from the island training with his brothers to ending up in this slave circle. And the inciting incident is when Murray decides to train Seagull up to become one of these Griever Knights. I had a lot of fun with this book. The start of it feels very Karate Kid with sort of the old mentor training this younger warrior in fighting. And the fight sequences were really, really well done. I'm someone who's not overly fussed for combat and fighting scenes. Well, I do like them, but I don't like them to be drawn out. It's done so well in the combat codes that I found all the fighting sequences really riveting. And the ending. I did see a couple things coming in the finale in the ending, but there was a lot of things I did not see coming at all. And it was so good, and I'm really excited for book two now. I enjoyed reading this book, but after the ending, it shot up in my rankings because the ending was just really, really good. My biggest complaint with the book is more of a stylistic choice that I would have preferred it to be something slightly different. There isn't a lot of subtlety in the characters. The good characters are good and you see them being good and the villain characters are bad and they constantly remind you of that by just saying and doing evil things, which I think is fine. I think it's very much a stylistic choice and it made it a very straightforward, fun, easy read. I don't think we need every book to have morally grey characters, but I would have liked it to be a wee bit more subtle in some, uh, some parts. Hey doll. That being said, I had a great time. I absolutely loved this book. The ending in particular was terrific. I was rooting for the characters the whole way through. It's just great fun. And I'm very excited to pick up the second book. I believe at the end of the year. It is very much a faster release schedule for these books because they are all written. They were originally self-published and then they were picked up by Orbit. So they are done, they just need to go through the processes of publishing. Next up is a really bizarre choice for me, but I'm reading Yellow Face by RF Kwong. And I, I don't really know what drew me to this because it's not fantasy and I've not read anything else from RF Kwong yet. She is the author of the Poppy War trilogy and also Babel. So to start with her non-fantasy book is a, I don't know, I was just drawn to it. But the basic premise to this is there are two authors. One is Asian and she's a best-selling author. She just got signed a deal with Netflix. She's a huge deal. This is from the perspective of her friend who is white and not doing as well in the publishing world. Her debut kind of flopped and she's very jealous of her friend. This is until her friend dies and the white friend then steals her 
unpublished manuscript. And the reason I'm pointing out that one is Asian, one is white, is that this leans into a lot of themes of racism and who can tell what type of story. I'm only about halfway through, but I'm really enjoying it so far. It's a very fast read and it is very short. And it does kind of feel like you're just watching a train wreck <laughs> coming. Because you know it's all going to blow up in her face. You just want to know how and when. But yeah, I'll probably finish this very soon and then I'll hop into... It's so strange. This is completely blown out, isn't it? And completely dark on this side. Pretend it looks okay. And then I will focus on Isla's Reach, which I have already started and I'm having a really good time, but I want to get in a wee bit further before I talk about it. But this is, this is a bit more of a chunky fantasy read. This is more up my street. This is something I know. But yes, welcome to the video. Next time I do a talky thing, I'll try and make it look better. <laughs> And I kind of forgot to film anything else in Spain. However, to keep this consistent... <sighs> it is warm here in Spain today. So I finished Yellow Face. And this book is really difficult to review. <laughs> I'll go over the things I don't like first so then we can end on the positives because overall I did have a good time with this book. The theme of my complaints is I just wish this book did more. I kind of wish that the themes were a wee bit deeper. It felt very one angle to the situation. A lot of the themes with race and who can tell what type of story weren't explored to the level of depth that I would have liked, especially when it feels like that was very much the point of the book, was it was a very theme heavy book and it just felt a little straightforward from the theme front. Equally, there were some thriller elements that I just wish were just a wee bit more thrillery. <laughs> I felt like that side of the story was kind of just brushed away, especially towards the ending. The actual finale and the climax was fine. That's kind of half the problem, is it was just fine. It made sense, it was good enough. And I had a good enough time with it, but I just wish there was more. I wish that she'd gone a wee bit more into a certain aspect of the story that I don't want to overly talk about because I'm keeping the spoiler free. But I just wish she was a wee bit more dramatic with some of the themes and also a certain leg of the story or aspect to the story. I just wish there was more to it. In the ending, it just, it was fine. And I wanted it to be more than fine. <laughs> this is marketed as a thriller and I don't think I would consider it a thriller. I did find some of the dark humor aspects pretty funny. It's more of a haha <laughs> nice than a <laughs> But it really, it works. It works really well. As for the things I liked about this book, I think this was a really entertaining and captivating read because it was just like reading a... Uh, I think the author even said this. She said that she wanted it to seem like a... almost like a Twitter drama and it felt like that. It was just a wee bit more entertaining than a Twitter drama because I don't like Twitter dramas. But when it's tied into a story like this and it's from the character's perspective, it is just really easy to fly through. It's such a quick read and it's entertaining the whole time. There isn't really much in the way of downtime where you're just like, okay, I'm ready for the next point now. And I think this is in part because of Rebecca's writing. Her pro style in this is not conventionally, conventionally, is that the word I'm looking? Conventionally. <laughs> I'm an author. <laughs> it's not conventionally beautiful or lyrical, but I think it's really, really well written because it's super punchy. It's just really clean prose style, super punchy, super straight to the point. It feels like it's just really well put together. And clearly this shows her expertise in the English language and using it effectively. Equally, I think the main character, June, is a fantastic and really well-developed character. We are in her head, this is in first person, and seeing her paranoia and her, and all her worries and concerns is just really, really, really well done. This is very much an unlikable main character, which I think is uh, to do a lot with the more mixed ratings, is a lot of people don't like June, 
that's kind of the point. June's not meant to be a likeable character. And it's great to hate her because you can see her making these decisions and you can see why she thinks it's the right decision. You're like, no, <laughs> this is not the right decision. But you can see why someone like June would make the decision she makes. And there's some really real passages of her having downward spiral moments where it's very almost like a panic attack and they're very effective passages you can see the it feels very visceral it feels like you are having the panic panic attack with june so overall i did enjoy this it just wasn't what i was hoping for particularly the ending but it's, it's still a fun fast read i just wish there was a wee bit more done with the thriller aspects and also the themes however still an entertaining read Great one for going on holiday because it is so fast and easy to read. I'm very excited to read Rebecca's other work. I want to read her fancy stuff because I think that would be more up my street. And this certainly proves she's a very capable writer, so I'm excited to get to The Poppy War and also Babel. When am I going to get to them? I don't know, but I will get to them and I'm excited for them. <laughs> Should we get a setting change for the next book? Right, ready? There we go. Next up, I have been listening to From Cold Ashes Risen on audio quite a while now, but I've now finished it and I just want to talk a little bit about this series again because it's really cool and I love it. This is the third book in the War Eternal series, the first being Along the Razor's Edge. And I'll be perfectly honest, this is quite a difficult series to talk about. And part of the reason for that, I think, is because this is going to sound really weird, but some of the reasons I love this series are the same reasons why I don't think it'll be a favourite. Sounds a little counterintuitive, but let me explain. Book 1, we do get flashbacks to Eska's past. However, in Book 2 and 3, we don't really get flashbacks, but we do cover a lot of time in each book. These feel like a saga, a tale of this legend, this ancient corpse queen that did all these terrible things. And that's partly why I love this series. It is like being inside a myth. That's just kind of how it feels like because Eska talks about how people saw her doing these incredible things and causing these horrific massacres for people and how she got the name the Corpse Queen which we do learn about in this book by the way. And I love that so much because we get Eska's point of view. We can see her going through these experiences and the reasons she does the things she's doing. And often it's not why the people think it is. And you can see how from the outside it looks like she's this big great monster. But then when you're from Eska's perspective you can see how vulnerable she is and, and all her struggles. And I, I love that so much. But like I said because of this we do jump about time quite a bit which means we gloss over stretches of our life that a lot might not happen. It does create this kind of stand back element to the story where you're kind of, it feels like you're hearing about Eska's life from her rather than you are experience her life, experiencing her life through her eyes, which is really a unique story structure that I've not seen before. And it's partly why I love this story. But at the same time, I, I, my preference <laughs> is to really live through the characters. And that's not to say that Eska isn't an amazing character because she is, she's genuinely one of my favorite characters in all of sci-fi and fantasy. And I highly recommend that people check out this series. And what's really cool is this is a five book series. However, Rob wrote the first three and then took a break and came back to write the fourth and fifth book. So this kind of has a resolution it feels very final, which we didn't really get in book two. Part of my complaints for book two was just it ended and I felt like it was an ongoing story, whereas this feels like the continuation to that. Book two and three feel very connected, which wasn't a problem because I was just going to pick up book three straight after anyway. So <laughs> it wasn't a big deal. I still really enjoyed book two, but I do think the book three was even better. And I've said this every time that I mention this series, but Eska really is the magic of this series. Her tenacity and just pure unfettered rage <laughs> is really what carries this series for me. However, she's also a deeply troubled character and has a lot of development throughout the books. So she's quite a complex character. I, I know that makes her sound kind of one note, but she's definitely not. She's just a very angry but complicated person. And the world building in the second and third books really blow this series up to a huge epic scale that I didn't think we were going to get from book one. From book one, I thought this was going to be a very character-driven series, which 
I'm all here for. However, with book two and three, we really get a lot more about the world, its past, how it's constructed, more about the Rand and Yin, which are kind of like these two god deity races that were in a constant war against each other. And that side of it is fascinating and it's really interesting to get pieces throughout these, mainly book two and three, and learn more about. I've been really enjoying that bigger scope from the second third book. I also, I really like the side characters. The side characters, Tamura, Imiko, Hart, are all amazing characters. Even Serakis, I, th I think Serakis is such a great character. But this ties into my earlier point of it being quite a standoff story, is that while they're very unique and individualized and well distinguished characters, I feel like there's a level of depth I would have enjoyed to spend longer with these side characters. Particularly Imiko in this book does go through an arc, but it feels very you kind of have to piece it together yourself. You get told bits about what she's up to and how she's coping or not coping, but it's very much in the background and I would have really have liked that to have been more on the forefront and that we had some smaller moments with the cast of characters to really develop the side characters. I think they are fantastic characters. I just wanted to see more of them. That being said, the ending was amazing. I enjoyed this book so very much. I'm so excited to continue this series and it really is a fantastic unique experience that I think everybody should at least try. And that's kind of all the books I finished. Because I mentioned it earlier in the video, I am still reading Isla's Reach, and I am having a lot of fun with it, but it's, it's a chunky book. It's just under 600 pages. And as a slow reader, that'll take me some time to get through. However, I really enjoyed the introduction to this world. I really like the character Evelyn that we're following, and also this mysterious second point of view about this tongueless wanderer that seems to be on a path of revenge it seems really interesting and i'm excited to see how that all ends up and i'm already having a ton of fun with this this feels very classical fantasy in a way because we have this girl in this village in the middle of nowhere in the mountains and she's going to be bonded to this dragon and there's an ancient war there's other dragons there's animal companions it just feels so comforting it feels like coming home you know which fits well into this end of this video because it's a Spain video and I'm coming home. Whoa, I'm home, incredible. Movie magic, they'll never know. But yes, thank you very much for watching. Outro.